So we begin our small unit here on PyMongo. PyMongo is the distribution that allows us to talk to MongoDB through our Python application. We've already used PyODBC, so you'll see some similarities. I'll leave you this documentation link in the PyMongo Read the Docs. This is probably your most direct source of help. You'll find uh, when you want to do your searches, think about the methods we used in Mongo Query. And although those method names were uh, JavaScript like, camel case in nature, if you just take that camel case, for example, find one and remove the camel case and use your underscore instead, you'll pretty much find most of, most of the methods you need. And we can have our hyperlink here with some sample uh, information. Okay, so this is help, and we'll be using that quite a bit in class. Now, what I want to talk about today in this video is simply connecting to the Mongo database through our application. So a couple things we want to note. Uh, here's our Anaconda installation. We can look at that in the Solution Explorer on the right-hand side. So we can see that we had PyODBC that was already part of Anaconda's uh, install. And shortly there, above it, PyMongo. So it's already on a machine. We don't need to bring that down. Uh, however, we will need to import it. Okay. Now, in this way, we're doing a very simplistic connection. And uh, I'll show you the modification we're going to use when we do our lab. It just includes a little bit more error handling. But if we think about the basics here, connecting to MongoDB is hierarchical. It represents exactly what we see here in 3T when we're querying our database, right? We have a server, localhost, listening on port 27017. Then we have a database like Pokédex containing a collection Pokémon. Well, we see this same hierarchy right here. After we import Mongo Client, Mongo Client is the uh, constructor for creating a connection to a server. All right, so we just right now need to import Mongo Client. And uh, in either one of two ways, we can either use the URI uh, method seen on line two, or we can just use this Mongo Client constructor and pass it the two required parameters or the default parameters, which is uh, it's presuming localhost is a server listening on port 27017. See, once we make this call to Mongo Client with these two parameters, we have a Mongo server connection object. Okay, so I usually just call mine something with a server sort of naming convention. Then through the server, we will now want to make a database connection object. So we see this right here through the server. We can use dot notation to refer to, in this case, the Pokédex database. And then we see, last but not least, we can access the collection, my collection variable there, through the database uh, connection object. Okay, so we go from the server to Pokédex, the database, to the collection Pokémon. Okay, we can use dot notation or square bracket notation to refer to the databases in collections. Okay, now always a good idea to test it, and a good test is just to do a quick find method, our select all equivalent. So I could say something like uh, the Pokemon cursor will be my name of my variable, and then we'll, through the collection, start referring to some Py Mongo methods, the easiest one being find. And if we pass find nothing, it's going to do a select all. Okay, so we'll do a quick print, and we know that if we try to do something like this, print the Pokemon cursor, we're not going to see anything. Okay, this is just like SQL Server when we did PyODBC. You know, the cursor has quite a bit associated with it, including the records itself. So if we want to take a look at the data, we can cast that cursor as a list simply to see, did we get the data coming from MongoDB? Okay, and there you see it. So we know we've got a good connection, we've got a good reference to the database and the collection itself. Okay, now a short explanation about what you'll be working with in your lab. We will use a common module, I've called it Get Collections, and it represents a hierarchy, but with some error handling. 
Okay, so for example, in this top level function, what I want to do is try to get the connection going, get that server connection object. So here I'm trying to uh, create a connection object using localhost 27017. And through a series of exceptions, I'm trying to handle if we can't connect to the server. Okay, the idea at the end of the day is if there aren't any exceptions, we will return the connection object. Okay, this function is actually used by the call to get access to the database. Okay, that makes sense to me because it's hierarchical. The database object is through the connection object. So one of the first things we're going to do here is call the uh, method I've got for getting a connection object. And we'll use that connection variable right there. Through the connection object, we can do a similar sort of show databases command. Here through the connection object, it's called list databases. All right. The idea behind it is if we pass this method a database name, then we're going to look to see does it exist on the server. OK. And if it does, this is good news, then we'll return the database uh, object. OK. And obviously, if we don't find it, we'll return null. And then last but not least, this is the function that you will call in your lab. This function calls the other methods. OK, so if you pass this function a database name and a collection name, basically it's like saying, let's find the collection in this database. So we open with calling that database method we have right here. The hope is if we actively get a database found through the database name that we passed in, we will have a database object. We will test to see that we do have that object in existence. And if we have that database object, then we'll do the same routine that we did with the database searches. Let's go see if we can find the collection that you passed into this method. If we find it and it's in that list, then we'll return the collection object. All right. Otherwise, we'll raise some exceptions um, so that you know that it wasn't found. OK, so this will be provided to you in your lab. And so will an original try except statement. OK, so in your lab, basically, you're given this. The idea is that call variable you can use in this uh, lab experiment as a, a global variable just to refer to the data coming into this application. OK, and then you always want to test it, too, which is why I uh, did a little find method here. And let's just print it so I can make sure I can get the Pokemon data here through this application as well. And we're good to go. All right. So there we go. There's an explanation of our starting point. You see, see once we have a connection, um, we're good to go to start running our queries. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.